Welcome to the final video in the Archer tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna do the arrow shooting. And let's start with that since we were finished with the uh, shooting animation in the last video. Now, here we're gonna use this point. On the very beginning frame, we're gonna have to add a, a notify that will allow the player to actually shoot. Uh, an arrow. Now we have a similar scenario in one of the AIs I provided you. We have an arrow shoot that was used. This uh, this actor is what was gonna be spawned, and in the same time, we're gonna have to use a notify. <coughs> like I said, so the notify we used was each Jigeni shoot arrow. And this item notify is what we will be using as well for the player, except that this function is specific to this enemy. We're gonna duplicate this, but make it for the uh, the player. So let me copy this, and here let me just type AI player shoot arrow, and the notify color would be some different color just to make a difference. Here we're using this one. We're gonna have to make a similar function in the uh, ability or uh, the, the player himself so the player we have this one let's create the, it's let's create the function we're looking for custom event and player shoot arrow now similarly to the enemy we had we're gonna copy all this And just add it here. Now we don't need to calculate the angle between the actors, so that's something we don't need. So the cast, this whole cast won't be needed. Uh, yep, let me take all this out. Now the arrow class will be the same class we have, we were used for this one. The location would be, uh, what do you call it? A location we specified on the mesh. So get the mesh from this one and let's make a socket on the mesh where we can actually aim so ignore the error for now we're not worried about this go to the skeletal mesh right here now considering uh, we're using what do you call it this animation this animation now the animation uh, is using the uh, the uh, ghost samurai katana we don't need the katana we just want to specify a specific uh, angle to the uh, bow so for now let me go on the weapon because that will tell me exactly where the uh, bow and arrow were uh, so or we can actually just change this to preview a different one so for now ghost samurai bow And here we're going to use which animation? Shoot loop in place. Shoot loop in place. And we can use this one. Here we can totally see where the location of the arrow is. So let me create a new socket. Which the socket is going to be at which hand? This is the right hand. And the right. And we can get the arrow. We probably could use this one, but let me add a socket just for uh, just to double make sure that I'm using the right location. Let me copy the name as well. Let me add a preview to it, which is R1. Now, if I move this up, it doesn't show. Yeah, because it's in in it's in there. So this socket location we created, let's align it with the one we have. This could work. Now, arrow socket is what we'll be using. We copied the name, so we go back to the player. 
and we can use this one and for the target sorry uh, we don't need this for now let me just take it off we're going to use this so the location will be the location of the arrow socket and the rotation will be the rotation of the arrow socket now let's double make sure that this is responding as it should now ignore this ignore this for now we don't need it let me put this down and for the player shoot arrow we created cast to bow the pressing character and then shoot now let me take this off we don't need this one as well we will use this one later for now just take the arrow shot off our uh, arrow power away and let me test with this one now let's see of course ignore these arrows this only appear to me and I couldn't see it that's because the bow or this one actually uses a speed I'm gonna cover all this later but right now let me just just focus with me on this one and I don't see it anywhere but did we spawn it arrow we did not so let me double make sure that this function got called altogether. Ah, we didn't include it here. Player <coughs> shoot arrow. Now if we aim, shoot, this one was called, let me take it off. You can see two projectiles spawned, but their location is somewhere somewhere weird <laughs> uh, actually that's because of the uh, there's no static mesh here so make sure you add a static mesh to it I mean, again I'm gonna explain everything just bear with me now if I aim and shoot you can see it spawned but it's in a different location that why why I wanted it to be the reason being again it's a socket thing and if I I set the socket back, let's make sure what happens. Double make sure. If I aim shoot, and you can see it's actually fine except that the rotation is off. Now that's because I'm using the one from the bone directly. If I change the bone to hand underscore right, this probably could actually fix it. Now of course I'm gonna have to double make sure the rotation is right and so on. Let me zero these things out let me move it make a snapping less let's rotate and now let's move it Now let's see what happens when I keep it at this uh, rotation. It spawned under me. Now I'm gonna have to raise it a little. Now I see the rotation is a little off again. So let's fix that. A little like this. Now it moved to the left, let's move it to the right. A bit of a debugging here and there. More to the right. You can see it floating though, just ignore this for now. And this seems about right. Now we're gonna have to make it move, so put the moving back to the arrow. 
like this now i'm gonna explain what the arrow happens when you spawn the arrow now the arrow getting spawned i'm just creating a trace to it that's for damage dealing uh, if you're following along this is tcf specific so ignore this uh talking the trace on specifying a bone in it to for the trace to start firing oh, sorry for the trace to fire and then i'm creating an attack property like i'm attacking like normal attacks in uh, regular animations constructing the attack property like i'm I, i'm doing also in a regular animation and now this you have a projectile movement on the arrow and the static mesh now the static mesh is the one i showed earlier it's the arrow itself you can add a skeletal mesh if you want however you prefer and then for the projectile movement i'm specifying the initial speed to be 5000 in a forward direction from wherever you spawn it and now the velocity and the life span and if it ever hits something just destroy it so let's try with this one since we hooked the speed back it's too quick i can't even catch it so let me slow this down uh the speed let's make it 100 for now ah and it's moving in the in the in the left direction now that's because uh the arrow i have is flipped on its side for example if i show you here this is minus 90. so the best thing we can do is just duplicate this player arrow and just use the player arrow instead without uh, both or person player arrow arrow here we go now if i open this back put this one back to normal and rotate this to 270 which should look like this now if we try and aim and shoot it's moving in a different rotation and let's actually move it from here let's make it 90 ish now if i try and shoot and it's working of course wherever the arrow is going to is not exactly what i'm aiming at so let's fix that one now this is okay so let me take it off take this off take this off this one we need player you need this one you need this one you need this one now the rotation depends on the rotation of the socket itself we don't need that instead we want to shoot wherever we're aiming at now we're gonna have to use the follow camera for this wherever the camera is aiming at get world location actually we don't need that exactly let me just do this from wherever the socket location is at and wherever we're looking at like the specific location so for this we need a specific location so line trace and the location will be the thing you're looking at right so line trace for by channel actually by channel and that would be from the player character sorry from the uh, camera down to forward location multiply it by let's just say um 5000 for now just to actually see what's going on uh, before you hook this up double make sure we add first to this location and then we connect it to the end now let's try and wherever we're aiming at is exactly where it should go however no, we didn't use the rotation yet but you can see where we're aiming at if you want to make it easy um, uh, add like a small dot in the middle of the screen that can actually help so here if we hit something that is 5000 away now we can make it larger like 8000 let me take these off So if it's something I actually hit, you can do this. So the rotation is here and that's the rotation. 
another rotation of the socket itself because we don't need that now let's try if you aim shoot and you can see the arrow is going exactly where we wanted it to be if you aim at the ground same thing aim at this same thing however what if we aim in the sky you can see they already didn't even spawn and that's because we are not spawning an arrow when it doesn't hit anything however we do need to spawn an arrow so we put this back if it didn't hit anything the location remains the same however the rotation will be anything that is 3000 distance away it will look easy to the eye so between 2000 and 3000 I found to be a good value so anything that is 2500 to 3000 away is good so we can use this one and just like we did here start location will be this the end location will be 2500 so let's aim somewhere in the sky and we can shoot and you can see it's relatively okay here we aim at walls ground whatever you want to call and it will go to it now let's speed it up because being making it this slow won't uh, will make it realistic so let's make this 5000 and let's try shooting and it goes where we want it to be in the sky all looks great now let's take off the uh, debug type and let's remove this one more thing left to explain only for TCF users so if you're not a TCF user you can in the tutorial here now we have a damage application per impact and that was something I was showing in the uh, montages that's the amount of damage you want to deal so if it's hit if it hits something affect the health and so on you can modify this here if you have multiple arrows you can um, uh, modify all of them depending on the arrow that you're spawning so any arrow that you have let's say you have a fire arrow will that have will have different values uh, if you have like a bone arrow that will have a value a stone arrow will have different values and so on so you can modify this here however double make sure that this is not exposed if you want to do it like if you want to uh, modify a peer arrow type because right here let me refresh this it was exposed so that arrow uh, application was being set here so any value you could actually set that would be overridden here so with that being off you don't have to worry about it. now arrow power is something specific to the property maybe you could use later for something that you want and uh, that's all I wanted to show uh, that's it for the Archie tutorial series if you have any questions or bugs or whatever, make sure you hit me up on Discord. I'm always there, always reply. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one.